Friendly friends, you are a disciple of the fluffy slippers. You have straight posture. And today we are going to be looking at Sommy's dark curse prophecy. Who is Sommy? He's your friend. That's me. I am me. Unfortunately, this scenario is a 70% chance for crypto. This is what I am seeing right now. It is subject to change. These odds can flip, but is an, an unfortunate scenario because this is what I am seeing all the way out from today. I have taken everything from the past. I am now going to apply it today. What is my dark curse prophecy? We are going to go through this one by one. Okay. The first part, this is Bitcoin, Ethereum, everything in crypto. Hex, Pulse Chain, Doge, Chainlink, every single thing you can imagine is affected by this because of the Bitcoin correlation. So my dark curse prophecy, there are skulls here to indicate it is actually a dark curse. There is a 70% chance. I was seeing 50% before, but now with this Bitcoin, BlackRock, Spot ETF, it is now 70% chance. What we have here, Bitcoin tops at $85,000. And it tops at the end of 2024 or very early 2025, okay? Basically, nobody exits because they think $100,000 is programmed after the long wait. Also, Ethereum tops at $8,500. Don't worry, I'm going to show the charts right now. And nobody exits anywhere in these. No way. Zero chance. I have so much faith that if this plays out, there will be so much unfortunate destruction and turmoil. I can tell you that this scenario could play out and no one's going to listen to me. In fact, there are people probably listening to it right now. They are scoffing at the idea that after making us wait for so many years and so long that Bitcoin won't be able to touch 100K and close through it and smash it, is it's, it's basically we are spitting on the very nature to be a bull. But this is the unfortunate scenario. I don't make the rules, friends. This is just, it's what I'm seeing. It's what I'm feeling. So everybody expects Bitcoin 100K and Ethereum 10K. So ETH BTC 0.10 or even a flippening. And everyone expects the Ethereum flippening to come next. That's what they're expecting. The next thing, the next thing. So if we go to the chart, this is the unfortunate part is, okay, do you have a seat? Let's have a look down here. Okay, see this 20,000 X? I marked this for you, friends. So Bitcoin's first cycle did 20,000 X. It wasn't even traded. You don't even want to count it, right? In the next cycle, so this is where DaVinci J15 and Richard Hart bought. They bought the top up here, okay? It went 600 X from the low. It took six months to drop, six months to recover, 600 X from the low in this cycle. In the next cycle, which was the, so this was, by the way, this was the early majority. No, sorry, this was the early innovator cycle. This is where, Roger Ver basically started to kill it because Roger Ver got in at a dollar, right? He started to kill it here. This is where Da Vinci, this is where the early innovators come in, like the early guys. Now we go to the early majority up here. This is where Ethereum gets birthed and all the ERC-20s. This is where John McAfee comes. This is where Tim Draper comes and says Bitcoin's a better money. They're more pragmatic. They appear to the rest of the world. They're showing everything and the possibilities of crypto. 100x in this cycle. Ethereum gets launched here, the big tech, okay? Then in the next cycle, which is what we just had now, we only got a 20x. Are you noticing already? 20,000x, 600, 100, 20x. As you can see, everybody gets trapped in each cycle because they expect as big as the last one. So even, even in your 100x cycle here, in the Ethereum cycle, the previous one went 600x. So that's why no one was thinking to get out at 20k, only very few select people. So that's why now everybody was expecting another maybe like 50x, maybe not 100x, but 50x. We only got 20 in this cycle, in this 2021 cycle. Then China scammed us, okay? China scammed us and that's it. It was just game over. So if we keep multiplying it down, it says the next one's a five. Now, I know we're just doing these normal maths, but when you look at this chart, is it going to be that simple to see, you know? So it lines up. If you do a 5x from here, if you do an exact 5x, you know, where you get around here, you get everywhere, anywhere. From, I think the real number is like 5.4x or whatever. So you get about eighty two to $88,000. Just use the upper mark, eighty dollars to $90,000. That's where it lands. And I have the arrows here to signify it. It's under 100K. 
And if you see Bitcoin's chart, it's waving out like that to do that. So this is this is where the chart, without me even putting the story together, this is where it's been going anyway, Bitcoin to do that. And Ethereum, right? Ethereum, same story. But Ethereum cycle, it's doing the same thing. The Ethereum liquidity is linked to Bitcoin. So have a look at this, okay? In the very first cycle, Ethereum absolutely went nuclear to the top, okay? This is Ethereum versus Bitcoin. And then what happened was, in the bear market, this is where I started getting turbo bullish long on Ethereum when I first discovered it because I was new back then. But if you notice here, Ethereum's relative volatility to Bitcoin is very linked. The liquidity is super thick. You can go and check. It's like $400 million each side. So they are basically tied to the hip now. So in this scenario, this is what I believe. Like this is what I think could happen, right? So somewhere, Ethereum, we start just trying to do the bull market again, right? And Ethereum comes up. And if we come up here and everyone thinks the next leg is going to be the flipping. That's what everybody believes is the next leg. But maybe we just literally just do this for a long time. I know this is, by the way, friends, this is a two-week chart. You know, you have to have appreciation. It's a long time. So a two-week chart, it can like really make things look easier than what they are because it, it's not, you know, we might even find out we're up here. Ethereum, BTC, everybody thinks that the flipping is coming next. As soon as we all start talking about the flipping, and we don't, and we just start doing this, and only the flipping comes later on, which is what we'll see. This is 2028. This is the Bitcoin next, the actual next halvening. So this is another death and destruction, right? You know, even this cycle, this is what I thought was going to happen. I thought because Ethereum is being used, you see this, I thought we we're going to do that like that. I thought we we're going to flip and come back down, but I was wrong because the volatility condensed. The liquidity is too thick. So it's tied to the hip, okay? So I'm going to continue now with the Dark Curse Prophecy, friends. So that is, unfortunately, this is before I even made this story. So you're going to now start to see the story be played out. But I want you to know, before the story even gets to played out, the, the chart is already saying this. This is very unfortunate, okay? So we've already went through part A. Now, part, part B. Now, this is the next part, okay? We're going to read through this. So Bitcoin's BlackRock ETF, the spot ETF, it looks great at the start but it becomes a curse and it lines up with the 5x return as I just showed you here. These are, if you're new, welcome, welcome. Take a seat over there, please. Keep your posture straight and remember, you are always going to be my friend no matter what, whether we go to negative numbers or infinity. And I'd like you to know that these big events are what we call buy the rumor, sell the news. What that means is when the market was capitulating down at the end of 2022, I was saying you have to buy crypto. You have to buy crypto. Why? Because weak hands are getting out. And nobody understood what I was talking about. And I kept saying, markets don't move the way you think they do. They move off emotion. When weak hands panic, strong hands like me, we are staying long and we're even getting in more simply because the weak hands are out. Because we believe in our hearts, at some point, a good narrative is going to come anyway. And we're going to own the asset. And that's exactly what happened. Good narratives will start coming, as you saw now. We were correct. Okay, so I know you're going to have an appreciation for this. If you zoom down, it looked like death and destruction. Look at this right-hand side. Just look at the, and no one ever knew. This is what it looks like. You know, No one ever knew any good news would ever come out. And then surprise, surprise, oh, oh, we, we're, we're rallying and the Fed's going to hold rates and the ETF and stuff. So all of this starts happening, friends. So it's, it, this is what happens with markets. So the Bitcoin BlackRock spot ETF, I, it's around the halvening, around this peanut brain zone, right? The peanut zone. So at some point, maybe there's a first wave up. We come back down and sell the news and then we go for the next one. And everyone's going to think that's the mega one, but that's a trap. Now, you might say to me, well, how is it a trap if all retail, if everybody gets the DCA buy and put in trillions of dollars in? You can already see the media, friends. You can already see people now doing theoretical numbers. They say, well... BlackRock has 9 to 10 trillion. Yeah, BlackRock has, say, 10 trillion, right? If just 0. Point, if just 1% enters, that's 100 billion, right? Coming in just to hit market or whatever it is, okay? That's what they're saying, okay? But this is not reality, okay? This is not reality at all because what people don't know is, okay, markets and governments, it is a symbiotic relationship to control people. Because governments need fear. And, and by the way, this is not even like it's not even like crazy to say this. Just think about this. If you were in government and you wanted to maintain power and control people power, you only have one button. It's the it's the fear button. Okay? This is how humans work. You don't, we when we when we're euphoric or when we're euphoric, we we let things go here and there, but we don't act out of necessity. 
when we are in even anxiety, we don't act out of necessity. Even like when we're a bit happy or mildly happy, the spectrum of emotions, we don't act anywhere near as powerful as if we act on fear. F-E-A-R, fear. When we have fear, we will do anything. The super irrationality comes, okay? Super irrationality. You even know this from markets. When markets go euphoric, they go up to the top. But when the fear comes, see you later, I'm all out. Okay, markets move like that. That's why they move like that. They always go from fear, which means give me safety and I'll pay anything for it. So you're probably wondering, but they're still going to put in money, right? Here's the problem. The problem is this is exactly how you would set up the biggest bull trap of all time. So what you would do is you would buy this up, sell it down, and then as you get retail in, mum and dad, when it comes to 80, 85, 80,000 Bitcoin, everybody's DCA buying and then the big scam trap comes, right? Unfortunately, at that scam trap, the mums and dads who got in, they're putting in all their money. They're putting in their $50,000, $100,000 clips. And by the way, they're only used to 5% volatility. So these people are going to get absolutely destroyed. So even though they have our clip sizes, they are not going to be withstanding the volatility. And what they're going to do is in the midst of the turmoil, now obviously I don't know exactly where we're going to land. Maybe we just land, even if they just drop 50%, what they're going to do is go to the government and they're going to say, that's it, crypto is a scam. You let us in, we demand you to regulate the crypto industry. We demand you to put more fiat on ramp, KYC. We find out the culprit, do all this, do all that. Now they're going to invent some narrative. Don't worry about the narrative, it's going to come. Some sort of psyop scam where mums and dads who were clicking around, they're used to buying Amazon that only goes down 2% and now they get gypped into this Bitcoin buying because they're going to go by the top, right? They're going to come by the top because they're going to believe Bitcoin is programmed for $500,000. You might say to me, who's going to buy Bitcoin at 85K? Well, let me remind you, gold's market cap is up here. Gold's market cap is at 500,000. And what's everybody going to be telling them? We're going to be telling them Bitcoin is a better version of gold. We're going to a minimum $500,000. And then there you go. So this all lines up perfectly. And this is how the government uses the Bitcoin BlackRock spot ETF to not only accumulate Bitcoin, but get political power from the rest of the people. And as they do that, people are going to whinge and cry and they're going to say, hey, come and regulate me, please. Please come and regulate me. It's going to be the complete antithesis of what we want. And then probably the next cycle, which I'm going to explain soon, is the actual return. And we actually go break the top again because now the government is mega, mega, mega loaded on everything they wanted to. Remember, they have the Bitcoin BlackRock spot ETF. Big BlackRock is a government wing. It's a puppet arm wing of government. They control the biggest assets in the world. They have all the mums and dads. It's retail themselves. They can vote on anything they want, friends. Okay, so this is the reality of the situation we're dealing with. Now, also in part C, in this scenario, the government will ban themselves from owning stocks. And remember, where am I getting this from? The Fed did this in 2021 top. So yes, the Fed coincidentally, okay, the Fed, US Fed coincidentally banned themselves from owning stocks and then the stock market dropped. I'm going to quickly show you this in the SPX chart, which is the S&P 500 chart. And I promise you this, I saw from that lady AOC, she wants to introduce a bill for government insiders to not own stocks. So look where the Fed coincidentally banned themselves from owning stocks. Oh, golly gee. And then you just dumped the market, right? This is not a coincidence, friends. But remember, the government still owns it. So hey, it's still possible that, okay, yes, the US Fed um, banned themselves from owning stocks, right? They banned themselves from owning stocks and they they raised rates to 5%. They destroyed everything. Isn't that funny? That's just so egregious, sad. I wish people knew more about this and how the scam works, okay? But it is what it is, okay? So perhaps, maybe the, maybe we even, S&P 500 keeps going, fakes everyone out for a new bull market and then the government owns them. The government now bans themselves from owning stocks, because there's been too much government insider corruption. And they can, they, by the way, there's always roundabout ways for them to do it. But they'll just publicly say everybody wouldn't do it. And then, you know, poof, right? You see this chart pattern. You might think it's wildly crazy. No, it's not. No, it's not. This, this, do you know anything about the S&P 500, friends? You probably don't. Let me tell you the world's most difficult market to trade. This is why whenever anybody on Twitter tries to chart the S&P 500, I literally just laugh. I laugh. Look what it did here in the tech boom. Come back down. Spends four or five years going up GFC, it break the low again. Okay, this is literally a lost freaking 12 years. It, it does this, friends. It does this. So if, even if you go back in the 60s and 70s, look what the stock market can do, right? This is like years, man. This is years. This is 1964 to 1976. This is 12 years. Up and down. Oh, break the low. Come back down. No, breaking the low. Oh, my God. Look at this. Look at this. And everyone, everyone's going to tell you it's inflation and everything else. But hey, man. If they're banning themselves from stocks, <clears throat> they need some sort of reset at some point. I mean, who knows if that happens and we, then we just continue later.
By the way, I know this is just a squiggly line, but you're going to have an appreciation because this might be just a long time, friends. It might be a long time. So we're going to see how this plays out. But this is this. If you start, if we start seeing this, like if I start seeing Bitcoin around seventy to eighty thousand dollars, and the government bans themselves from owning stocks, and we see it in the news, I'm like, uh oh. Like that's why I'm just writing these out so we can kind of see. Okay. So <clears throat> also I have. Even MicroStrategy, which is Michael Saylor's company, the new CEO, they have a new one, right? He is forced to sell Bitcoin and make up a reason as to why they're still bullish. Example to pay off the old debt. Yes, friends, you see this <clears throat> around, seeing these rectangle boxes. Yeah, it's very possible that um, MicroStrategy is going to have to sell. I don't know if you know this, MicroStrategy has debt owed in 2025. They're, they're barely profitable, man. The company, uh, it's, it's making revenue, but I'm not even sure about the, the health status of it. So it's just, it would seem... So, such a perfect scenario where Bitcoin goes up around this Bitcoin BlackRock ETF, MicroStrategy sells in the midst of it. And remember, it's not Michael Saylor. So, my, I don't know if you know this, friend, just to remind you. Okay. So, Michael Saylor got removed as CEO. He stepped down as CEO in the bear market. He's not CEO. They put some other dude up. And I've made many tweets about this. So, wouldn't it be just a great coincidence if that new CEO is the guy who has to make the executive decision to sell some of their Bitcoin. And it's like, no, 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 we still believe in Bitcoin, but we just have to pay the debt. We're just, it's a balance sheet management. Don't forget, friends, they can dress up words, okay? The CIA are expert at these. They won't tell you we are dumping Bitcoin. What they're going to say is we are paying off debt obliga obligations. We are managing our balance sheet. They use these other soft words not to incite, you know, fear and, and panic into people, just to have everybody still on their team, okay? So if you see that, that's why I do think there's a hot chance because don't forget, man, they almost read these things freaking to zero. They're, they're a billion dollars offside, okay? They can't pay that off. They Imagine Bitcoin actually went to 10K and just stayed there for five years, man. They destroyed, destroyed. Remember, they bought it on leverage. They bought it on leverage, okay? What do you think that new CEO is doing? Do you think... Do you think that CEO goes to the bathroom every day, sits on the dunny and says, wow, Michael Saylor is such a genius for that leverage trade? No. During the midst of the turmoil, when you were all coming out, not you, obviously you're baby doll baby cakes and you have a straight back, when everybody was coming out and spitting with negativity because they're just smelly bears who poop in the woods, okay? When they were coming out and saying it, people were not thinking happy and straight. We were all depressed and angry. It was killing us. So I guarantee you that CEO, he was like, man, Michael Saylor is an absolute doodlehead. He leveraged everything. He almost sent this company to zero. I'm never risking that ever again. If I ever get the chance to sell that top, I will. Okay. And he's not going to remind. This guy's not going to be riding it to 300K, friends. So that's just something else to think about. And it'll be an unfortunate part for the Bitcoin maxis when this happens because, it, you know, but they're going to dress it up as nice, you know, because he's a Bitcoin maxi. They're going to say, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Bitcoin's going to go up anyway. So. This is just it, friends. So <clears throat> there we go. The next part, part D, look at this. So this cycle altogether happens because ultimately, this is the real reason, okay? So what I'm about to read you right now before we continue, friends, this is the real reason. It's not the stories and the scamming. This is the actual real reason. But you're not going to know this because when we go down, the pain is going to over overcome everything that you can think straight from, all right? It's going to, the, the pain, it's got kicking, kicking yourself in the nuts, all right, that's right, kicking yourself in the nuts. Or if you're a lady, someone, unfortunately, just like crushing your ovaries. This is the pain. You're not going to be able to think straight, just overwhelming pain. And it's all going to be because it was kind of programmed to how new humans react to cycles and emotions. That's just how it is, okay? So even though we know all this, let's go. This cycle will only happen because people know that the crypto cycle, it does three green years in a row. The biggest year of pump is after the Bitcoin halvening year. So the retailers will buy in 2024, the BlackRock ETF, right? Then they normally would buy in 2025. So instead of buying in 2025, we now get the non-believers to buy in 2024. Markets are learning euphoria dampens. Let me show you this, friend. So we have another, I'll just get a Bitcoin chart. This is how it works, okay? Just to, let, just to show you, okay? Because if we put this on a 12-month chart, you can see, right? I'm going to change it to a normal candle. You can see here, look at this pattern, right? Put on a log chart. You get to see, oh, wow. Bitcoin does four green, a red. One, two, three green, red. Bear market, one, two, three green, red. One, two. So we're going to believe, right, that 2023 is going to be, we're finishing green. And then 2024 is going to be finishing green, yeah? And what's everybody going to be saying? Oh, 2025 is the biggest candle of all. So have a look at this. The year after the Bitcoin halvening year, oh, this is 2013, look at this, it is a 50X. 
the year after the Bitcoin halvening year, this year closed a 13 to 14 X. Now, this one was the first clue letdown. Look at this. This only closed 66%. That's how badly we got freaking scammed in the last cycle. These insiders, friends, I'm just telling you, it's disgusting. So what's everybody going to believe for 2025? The year after our Bitcoin halvening, everything, everyone's going to believe, oh, if this just goes like another 2X, we're up here. By the way, look at this. Look at this. This is crazy, okay? If we just do plus 2 or 3X, whatever it is here, you get to like 100 to 200K. Everybody's expecting it. Now, you might say, hey, that doesn't sound so unreasonable. It doesn't. Here's the problem. The problem is that everybody expects it. What we would really want, so if you say to me, what would be a game changer? Because the game changer would be this, okay? The game changer would be if everybody expects a million dollars. Why? Because then you could just get out at like 200K and you've killed it. You're like, everyone's expecting a million. We're not going to get to a million. Maybe we get to 200K divided by five. This is a random guess, right? Unfortunately, everybody's expecting only 100K because the crowd is then trained to seeing these so many times. There's no more euphoria. Do you understand? If everybody genuinely expected, and not mean guessing, right? If everybody genuinely expected a $1 million Bitcoin, that would be the crowd still in cycle one, cycle two of this new phenomenon we call crypto blockchain, and they would expect euphoria. No one's expecting euphoria anymore, man. We're expecting this tiny little pin drop of a run, which you barely call a bull market run, which has been an absolutely atrocious thing if it happens. It's it hurts, it hurts to even plot this out, but hey, this is 70% chance, so we're going to have to do what we do, okay? So let's look at E. The stock market probably does this giant washing machine gyration, which I just showed you, as everyone is desperate to start a whole new bull market, but it ends up being some sort of big range for the, dec de for the decade. So that's exactly what I just showed you when it comes to this, because, you know, in the, in the, bull, in the, in, in the stock market, they know, they have this saying about where, you know, basically the stock market has 10 years of up and then 10 years of poop. 10 years of up, 10 years of poop, right? Now, what's happened, right? We've just had 10 years of up, okay? We've literally had 10 years of up. From the GFC, 10 years of up. Now, of course, don't forget, this could always just go just a little bit further to 2028 and then do our 10 years of poop. We can do that. But it depends on the, what, what chance do you want to take? Because... I can put this on a <clears throat> I'll put this on the monthly chart, friends. Don't forget, the Fed banned themselves from selling stocks here. What's gonna happen if we're in 2024? We break this high, the government bans themselves from stocks, and then we're just up here, and then we stall out and we come back down here. You'll never forgive yourself. And then we come back because they they print money, for example. Now, if you look at this over the, this is the big washing machine. It's the up, down, up, down. Okay, that's what it is. And a lot of valuations and metrics for stocks, they're like so disconnected, right? So, you know, you might say to me, well, but everybody knows this, but here's the problem. Everyone knows this, but when you're in Bitcoin, uh, what do the Bitcoin maxis tell you? They tell you that Bitcoin has no ceiling because they have to print infinite money. So what they're effectively telling you is there's no point you ever get out, ever. So, I mean... Do you really want to go through that? Do you really believe that now after seeing the death and destruction from 2021, 2022, even this year? Do you really want to take that chance? You know, I, look, the, on, on a long enough time frame, yeah, give me 10 to 20 years, we take that chance. The problem is we don't live in, in bouts of 20 to 10 to 20 years. We don't live in decades, friends. We live like day to day, okay? And there are so many weak hands in the market that even if something's going to be great in 10 years, People will sell unimaginably lows in one year. You've seen it. You've seen it in crypto. People selling, for example, Hex 99%, uh, crypto, Ethereum, Bitcoin, everything down 99, 98, 95%. Everyone just sells everything. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So even though you know everything's going to be good in 10 years, but what's the next 12 months, 24 months? That could be an absolute disaster. So that's why we've got to pay attention to these cycles, friends. So of course, here we go. Part E. No, we just moved part E. <clears throat> part F. Okay. So... In this scenario, what I believe is, if this happens, okay, we only get cut off because, so what happens is, this is what will probably happen, okay? So look, the, a world recession will happen 2025, the one that's like long, eventually overdue. It cuts us early in the bull market. Everybody thinks it's over, but then we come back in 2026 and 2027 to break the orthodox cycle by breaking new highs before the 2028 Bitcoin halvening. And that is exactly what we would be. So it would be kind of like this, right? So it would actually go up. And then down we go, woohoo, Bitcoin spot ETF, we come up, we come back down, and then everyone thinks it's over here. Everyone thinks it's over. They think, oh my God, it's a bear market. Don't bother buying until after the Bitcoin halvening. And then suddenly, 
they somehow get surprised that we're breaking the high before the Bitcoin halvening, something like that, right? So I'm just guessing here. So um, that would be the traditional breaking of everything, okay? So and we'll probably find out that crypto moves more in line with the stock market than it does with the halvening. That's what we probably might find as well. Now, altcoins in this scenario, the altcoins get obliterated. So in this scenario, everybody's let down in a big way. The only way alts uh, win, okay, is they get near their 2021 all-time highs because nobody gets out there. Everybody thinks the, it's only just getting started. We got another six months, right? So they only, maybe some of them, they go under it by 30% or maybe only above by 50% before they all collapse. Note that altcoins suffer only because Bitcoin is scammed and manipulated down. So Bitcoin stops at 85K and then everything happens, okay? So if you combine it, maybe hex is 30 to cents to 50 cents. Now, I know this is unspeakable. You're, I, I can already feel everybody vomiting right now. They say, there is absolutely no way hex doesn't hit a dollar. Yeah, yeah, well, you know what? We just went minus 99% down. So like all your odds and fairy tale dreams, have them. I'm just saying at some point, if this starts happening, you can't sit here and say, well, the government banned the stocks and all this is happening and you take nothing out. That's all I care about. I didn't care. I hope I'm wrong, by the way. I hope this doesn't play out. I don't want this to play out, but you still got to take something out here. Like what if I'm right? What if this thing actually plays out right? Okay. So this is the thing. Link 40 bucks or 70 bucks, which is sad because we do this giant cup and handle and we're going to have to wait a couple of years longer. Okay. So what I'm now going to do, my final part for you friends, I will now draw the total three charts. What will, and when we look back, it will appear as a giant cup and handle. Okay. So the big a cup and handle is like we, so this is the 2021. So we come up 2025 and then, uh oh, it's another bear market. We come back down 2026, 2027, we go up. That's the T, a cup and a handle. That's what I'm feeling like it would happen. And everybody gets scammed here. No one gets out. Instead, we have a mid cycle thing, which is death and destruction because it's going to feel bad because you've been waiting for five, six years at this point. All right. So, so 2025 is hurting, but then 2026 and 2027 somehow breaks the cycle somewhere, okay? Something happens as it appears to me, maybe we'll think about it, okay? Primarily because Ethereum is going to be ready to flip Bitcoin in that future and Ethereum might even get to its ETF. So that's why it might even be fueled by that because the Bitcoin ETF is successful and that happens, right? In this scenario, total crypto reaches about 4.5 trillion, which is only plus 50% over 2021. Now, don't forget, remember, I just showed you all these diminishing return cycles for Bitcoin. So in this scenario, <clears throat> if you said to me, hey, don't put any of your stories, just draw the chart pattern, we get this scenario, what I'm just describing to you right now. Okay, so that, that's a tough part, friends. So this is it. This is the total crypto market cap. We are right now about 1.13 trillion around here. So if you just go 50% above where 50% above, you see that's nothing right here, right there. So right there. So, so we, we're going to get right, right there, 4.55 trillion. And then we have this correction again. Yeah. And then we come up for it. So that is the curse. Think about it, friends. If we're at four, if we're at four point five to five trillion, what's everybody going to be talking about? Cryptocurrency is a ten trillion dollar asset class. That's what they're going to be saying. They're going to use the round numbers. It just it lines up too perfectly. It's like, well, no one's going to get out here. <clears throat> no one, absolutely no one, and you know it. No one's going to get out. Just to remind you as well, in this scenario, if this happens, okay. So this is ETH BTC. See how ETH BTC does these. Um, Jibby jabbies, the jibby jabbies are zigzags. Maybe, maybe we go up, we zigzag again. Everyone thinks it's a flipping ink. No, it's not. Flipping ink, no, it's not. Do we do this again? But then Ethereum ETF rumors come and suddenly <clears throat> Ethereum can start to flip Bitcoin at some point. Now, we're not going to know the US dollar values, but hey, we're playing for this move. So I have drawn here again the total crypto market cap and I'm going to now finish this off, baby dolls, with the answer to what to do. The answer of what to do lies in what you already know. You see this golden box? You've probably been buying in here. This is the total crypto market cap. So this is a linear chart. It's not log, okay? If I put it on log, it looks nice because you, you look at the great signs. See, I hate log charts sometimes, well, most of the time, because they in, assume you were in from the years before when it was free money. No, Use it, you zoom in, right? This is a real log chart. The real log chart is to go in closer and go, okay, this is actually our real experience here. So if you put in a, a regular chart, this is what it's going to look like, okay? 
So it goes up, Bitcoin ETF, we go up, we do some swingy high. Nobody gets out, absolutely no one here because around here, you know, Bitcoin's 85K, hasn't hit 100, et cetera. And then we get scammed. Okay, we get this scam part here. Now in this part, don't forget, in this part, I know it only looks like, you know, oh, it doesn't look like much. It's only, you know, 40%. Don't forget, this could be Bitcoin and Ethereum dropping 40%, all right? There's no saying, like, what our altcoins can drop 80% from that point, 70 to 80%. They can, because Bitcoin's only down 50% from its high right now-ish, and many alts are down 90, 93, 95, 97%. Okay, so don't think you have safety in alts just because Bitcoin and Ethereum aren't going to get crushed as hard, all right, because there are weak hands everywhere. So I feel like this is what I can see. I can see the future. I can see all the the day trading scum, short-termers, they will be charting this linear chart, and they're just going to show you this. They're going to be like, uh-oh, and it's going to be like this big fat dagger down or something, and they're going to be like, oh, crap. Like, they're just going to be like, this is the worst chart ever of all time. It can't even break the high. Next comes a three-year bear market, right? But what we're actually going to be doing is probably buying in that depression zone because you just know that, hey, maybe the money printer comes on. So this is what it is, friends. And you know what they're also going to do? They're also going to do the total crypto market cap. What people are going to do is they're going to get this absolute bottom. They're going to go to the top. And they're going to say, wow, traditional finance kills for a 500% or a 10x. But your favorite altcoins were able to give, you know, 5x to a 10x from the low. You got greedy. You should have gotten out. That's what everybody's going to be saying. This is what all the short-term traders always do every single time. And I can see that happening. You know why? Because they did it in this zone too. You know why? Because everybody was waiting for a 50 to 100x. But most alts, the average altcoin only gave you a 7x. It's 14x from the very low, but if you do the middle range with a volume node, 7x. So that's why everybody was saying, why didn't you get out? Why didn't you get out? You know. Now, of course, just a friendly reminder, you're not going to be able to get out at 7x because the next 60 days is a 70% drop. That's what happened in every altcoin. So you hit 70, look at this. If you're up 7x and then let's say, and it drops 70%, all right, you're only up a 2x now. That was the average person. Okay, so from November to end of January, so so in 2021, if you go to see here, from 2021, if you go November, December to end of January, you are down in all the altcoins, you are down 50 minimum. You are down like 70%. Now, this is 50% for the entire industry because it's Bitcoin, Ethereum. So this is why, don't listen to these people. I'm telling you, the only way to make it is you got to beat the crowd, <clears throat> right? And unfortunately, the crowd is expecting everything to line up with a dark curse prophecy. Now, I hope, I want to leave you with this. There is a bit of hope. If we get some sort of deep recession crack in 2024, which is next year, if we get a deep recession crack, then there's a chance they print us to oblivion and we continue the cycle as normal, okay? Also, I forgot to throw one thing. In every single cycle, there is a, a technology information um, creation from crypto. So here we had Bitcoin forks, okay, and Litecoin got made, like a faster Bitcoin that was seen as innovative at the time. Then we had Ethereum ERC-20s, also the blue chip creation. Then we had Uniswap and DeFi, okay? <clears throat> In 2024 next year, we hope something gets created because then that will lower the chance of this scam prophecy. So we have to be intellectually honest with ourselves. Is there going to be a new type of technology wave in crypto, right? And please don't, I know a lot of people think it's going to be like privacy. No, it has to be a new tech. A lot of people also say, oh, it's going to be Pulse Chain. Go, no, no, no. Pulse Chain didn't invent anything, friends. Hex didn't invent anything. I know you want to believe these have, but they haven't invented anything, okay? All they've done is someone made a car Richard Hart put an air conditioner in it, okay? The GDP increase of an economy from not having a car to having a car is enormous. But adding a little air conditioner is just a little tweak. So we we didn't invent anything. We just basically made, we renovated inside a McDonald's. We didn't really make the McDonald's itself. So you're going to have to be intellectually honest with yourself. That's why I already know people are, are wrestling with this idea already. That's why it's going to be tough, okay? So that's my full analysis, friends. There's actually going to be another cycle if everything plays out. I'll catch you in the next one.